يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger we ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him the prophets and messengers that came before him his family and companions that served alongside him and those that follow in their blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, we've spent the last few weeks talking about Palestine and, and, and what we see in Palestine and what we see in the world in terms of those that are oppressed. The ones that we mention frequently, like our brothers and sisters in Palestine, the ones that in the backgrounds, like our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria, and the list goes on things continue to unfold for them in a horrible way. And as we see these things, a lot of times there can be a shut off inside of you. And I want us to talk about this idea of ajz, of being unable, feeling helpless. It's actually a very interesting word and it's one that the Prophet ﷺ taught us in several of his duas and several of his supplications and realized there is al ajz in both our personal and our social contexts, both those things that affect us at the family level and those things that affect us at a global level, at a community level. al ajz is if you're seeing someone that you love in a lot of pain and you can't do anything to help them. Some of us have been in that situation, right? You see someone, a child, a parent, a spouse, a friend, someone that you love and you wish you could do something, but you can't do anything. And so you feel a sense of inability. You feel a sense of helplessness. al ajz could indeed be that you see the injustice of the world and you say, SubhanAllah, Allah maghfir lana ajzana. Allah maghfir lana ajzana. Oh Allah, forgive us for our inability. When we see our brothers and sisters in Palestine, when we see people that are oppressed at this level and you know this becomes a repeated thing where it's video after video, the trauma of seeing police brutality in the United States, if you are a black parent in this country and you have to worry about that being your child, the trauma of seeing people back home if you have migrated to this country and you realize that you are in a place of goodness and welfare and they're in a place of hardship. All of these things shut us off and they could make us feel a great sense of ajz, of inability. And there's this dua that we say morning and evening. It is not a new dua for people to learn. I think for the most part you have all heard this dua. But I want to elaborate on these few concepts inshallah ta'ala as they relate to us at a deeply personal level. Because if we are in a place where we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us overcome certain things that hold us back and if we are able to gain certain qualities, then that will make us more productive in all of our affairs. And this is a hadith, the dua is authentic across the board. The incident behind it is disputed, however the dua is um, undisputed in terms of how uh, authentic it is. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the masjid and he saw a man from the Ansar named Abu Umama. So he said to Abu Umama, Ya Aba Umama, ma li araka jalisan fil masjidi fi ghayri waqt salah Oh Abu Umama, why is it that I see you sitting in this masjid at a time that is outside of the prayer time? Of course, there were people that would sit and do tadabbur and tafakkur. There were people that would, re that would do reflection and contemplation. There were people that would engage themselves in remembrance. But Abu Umama looked like he had a lot on his mind, a lot on his heart. 
he was at there at the salah at a time or at the masjid at a time where he typically was not at the masjid before. And our Prophet وسلم, who had enough on his plate <laughs> adds more to his plate by going and asking people how they're doing. Now that's something by the way that should not be missed in this hadith. Rasulullah you can imagine when he came to the masjid how much he's carrying. When he leaves the masjid how much he's carrying. And sometimes you don't ask someone how they're doing because you know you're going to get into a long conversation, you know that this is going to prolong itself, I might regret getting involved because I don't have time to deal with this right now. But our Messenger وسلم, would ask people about them. He would, he would ask about people that were missing and he would ask people that were there but they seemed to be in a different place, that were physically present but emotionally, mentally looked like they were somewhere else. So why is it, O oh Abu Umama, I see you in this situation? So he said to the Prophet وسلم, قَالَ هُمُومٌ لَزِمَتْنِي وَدُيُونٌ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm just overcome with a lot of anxiety and I'm buried in debt too. So I'm, I have a lot going on in my life right now. I'm grieving, I have a lot of anxiety and at the same time, I'm buried in this debt. قَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَفَلَا أُعَلِّمُكَ كَلَامًا إِذَا أَنْتَ قُلْتَهُ أَذْهَبَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ هَمَّكْ وَقَضَى عَنْكَ دَيْنَكْ The Prophet ﷺ said, let me teach you some words that if you say them, on a daily basis in the morning and the evening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do away with your anxiety and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do away with your debts. Qala qultu bala ya Rasulullah. He said, I said to the Messenger of Allah, yes, O Messenger of Allah. Qala idha asbahta wa idha amsayta. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan. Wa a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasal. Wa a'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhl. Wa a'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dayni wa qahr al-rijal. So this is a dua, of course, that we say often and has different variations of it. But the Prophet wasallam said to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from anxiety and grief. Wa a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasr. And I seek refuge in you from inability and from laziness. Wa a'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhl. And I seek refuge in you from stinginess and cowardice. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ غَلَبَةِ الدَّيْنِ وَقَهْرِ الرِّجَالِ And I seek refuge in you from the burden of debt and from being subjugated to man, from being at the mercy of someone else other than you, O Allah. Now, Abu Umama continues, قَالَ فَفَعَلْتُ ذَلِكَ فَأَذْهَبَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ هَمِّي وَقَضَى عَنِّي دَيْنِ He said, I did what the Prophet ﷺ told me, so Allah indeed removed my anxiety and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did away with my debts. But I want to talk about this insha'Allah ta'ala, particularly from the first two sentences. The difference between these words and what the Prophet sallallahu is actually giving to us. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from al-ham, which is anxiety, and al-hazan, which is grief. Al-ham, the scholars say, refers to anxiety over the future. I'm worried about what's going to come next. I'm worried about tomorrow. I'm uncertain about this situation. I don't know how this is going to unfold and that's causing me a great sense of paralysis, alham. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, man asbaha wa dunya akbar hamma, whoever wakes up and has dunya, has the world, the life of this world as their greatest hem, their greatest concern, that which causes them great anxiety, ja'ala Allahu faqrahu bayna aynay. He has poverty between his two eyes. All he sees is poverty at all times. And so the hem here is not a positive hem. It's not worried about something that is good, but it's rather the anxiety that comes with being uncertain about the future, al-hem. Al-hazan is grief and it refers to the past. It refers to a great sense of loss. I can't get out of the pain that I am feeling in the past. And so basically, subhanAllah, you're, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the concern of the future and the burden of the past so that you can be more productive in the present. Because at the end of the day, both of these things paralyze you. They both stop you from being able to move forward. And sometimes we might think that we, we should feel a sense of guilt for moving on from something. You know, by the way, uh, I, it's always important to recognize that the shaitan leads you to either unproductive action or to no action at all by giving you good words, right? 
And so how can you move on from the past? You should feel guilty. You should hold yourself to the past and you should not do anything. That is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not praise about a person. You might think that it's a sin that I committed in the past and I can't get over it. And nadmu tawba, regret is repentance, but at the same time, hasra, which is remorse, where a person just sits around and a person says, yeah, hasrata, I messed up, I messed up, I messed up. That's not a praiseworthy quality. And so a person is either stuck in the past or they're way too concerned about the future. And the scholars mention here that when it comes to the past, because you're not just saying these du'as without understanding the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold you to the sins that you have committed in the past if you repented from them. So if it's a sin that's causing you grief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold you to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to move forward. And this is something that I want you to think if you were the Sahaba, we talked about Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu a few nights ago. Imagine being wahshi, right? And you caused that grief to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa by killing someone so beloved to him, but still you have the motivation to move on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want you to be frozen or paralyzed by your past. So if it's sin or something that you've done bad, you need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that's most forgiving. If it is pain that you feel over something that indeed happened to you, then it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that compensates for that pain in the hereafter. The compensation awaits around the corner. If it is regret that you did not do something differently, you know, sometimes we think, I could have done this differently and this wouldn't have happened. So we beat ourselves up over you know, not having done enough for someone or not having intervened at a certain point or not having done this or not having done that. Then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a plan for that person as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for you. The point is, is that you're not supposed to be frozen by your past, paralyzed by your past, but instead use it, grow out of it. And think about that which comes afterwards bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And remember that when it comes to the future as a person is so afraid anxious, uncertain about that which comes next, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed is upon all things in control. That everything is going to unfold in the way that is going to unfold, whether you concern yourself with it or not. But by acting in a way that is praiseworthy, bi ta'ala, the future will hold a positive fate for you. So alham wal hazan, and this is also when the angels come to us, when we are dying, Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu. Do not be afraid, Allah takhafu, about the future. When a person is leaving this world, the angels say, Allah takhafu, don't worry about that which comes next, wa la tahzanu. And don't grieve over that which you are leaving behind. What's going to happen with their kids? What's going to happen with their spouse? What's going to happen with this person and that person? What's going to happen with all of this? La tahzanu. What's going to happen next? Where am I going? What's the next stage here? At this point, there is no a'mal, there is no actions. La takhafu, don't be afraid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of you at this point. So min al-hammi wal hazan, and then I'll just talk about the second one. Min al-ajzi wal kasal. This is very powerful because al-ajz and al-kasal often get translated as the same thing. Al-ajz, which is inability, is adam al-qudra ala fi'l al-shay. It is when you don't have the ability to do something. So things are truly out of your, con your control. You're in a situation where you are helpless and you can't do anything about it. And you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, protect me from that. Al-kasal is when you have al-qudra ala shay, you have the ability to do something, but you have a tathaqul. You have a, a burden, something that's holding you back. You're able, but you're not willing. You can, but you're not. And a lot of times we resign things to al-ajz that are really just al-kasr. Many of us put things in the domain of we're not able to do it, where the reality is we're not willing to do it. So finding the motivation, finding the willpower to be able to do something. And this is something that we have to remind ourselves, that we push ourselves as much as we can. And sometimes the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up for us as a result of His blessing, bi-ithnillah, insha'Allah, by His will, by His permission, are things that we would have never thought we are capable of. Now the last thing I'll say here, min al-jubni wal-bukhul, cowardice and stinginess, we've talked about that before in the past, this idea of not being able to, to do something when I should do something, cowardice is I restrain myself when I should say something, when I should do something. 
Al-Bukhul is when I don't spend, when I could spend, I'm not generous, I'm, I'm paralyzed by a sense of fear of poverty. And then you find غَلَبَةِ الدَّيْنِ وَقَهْرِ rijal to not be burdened by debt or to be at the mercy of another person, to be subjugated by man. When the Prophet ﷺ was in Ta'if and the Prophet ﷺ said, إِلَى مَنْ تَكِرُنِي Who are you leaving me to? Oh Allah, are you leaving me to a family member or are you leaving me to a stranger? Who are you leaving me to? Because no one likes to be at the mercy of another human being in any way whatsoever. What I want us to leave with inshaAllah ta'ala today though, what is the psychological effect of repeating this dua every morning and evening and understanding what it means? Al-ajzi wal-kasal, al-hammi wal-hazan. Reminding yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of the future, so I should not lose, I should not lose myself in uncertainty about it. Reminding yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven what you have done in the past and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow that past to lead to future growth. Reminding yourself not to grieve over it. Reminding yourself that you get yourself out of al-ajz, that there are certain things that I cannot control. But oh Allah, forgive me when I can't control a situation and help me overcome those situations. Oh Allah, open up those doors for me. And al-kasal, when it comes to laziness, when a person just does not find the willpower to do anything anymore, when a person shuts down. All of these are deeply complex topics, but the effect of reading this on a morning and evening basis, where you're understanding the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you understand the deep wisdom of these words, are things that can truly transform our lives and more importantly, can lead to elevation. The hereafter, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from al-hammi wal-hazan. Na'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan. Wa na'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasal. Wa na'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhli. Wa na'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dayni wa qahr al-rijal. Allahumma amin. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Jurakum nisa al-muslimin fastaghfiru. Innahu al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma gfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahyai minhum wal-amwat. Innaka sami'un qaribun mujibu da'wat. Allahumma gfir lana wa rahamna wa afu anna wa la tu'adibna. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa inlam taghfir lana wa tarhamna. Lana kunana min al-khasirin. Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anna. Allahumma gfir li walidina. Rabbir hamhuma kima rabbuna sigara. Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhuriyatina qurrata a'yun. Waj'alna lil-muttaqina imama. Allahumma ansur ikhwanna al-mustadha'afina fi mashariq al-ard wa magharibiha. Allahumma izza al-islam wa al-muslimin wa adhilla al-shirka wa al-kathibin wa dammir a'da' al-deen. Allahumma ahlik al-zalimin wa al-zalimin wa akhrijna wa ikhwanna min baynihim salimin. Ibadallah anna Allah ya'mru bil-adli wal-ihsan wa ita' dil-qurba wa yanha an al-fahshai wa al-munkari wa al-baghi. Ya'idukum la'alakum tadakkaroon fathkuru Allah yathkurukum wa shkuruhu ala ni'ma yazid lakum wa ladhikru Allah akbar. Wallahu ya'amma fasna'oon wa aqim as-salaam.